what I'm saying with lots of pauses and a tear. Emotion! That's what makes it authentic. You can feel it! Sincerity! Pragmatism. Is it true? It doesn't matter! Trust me! I'm in a green chair! online and up and running with the green screen hum and an appropriate picture of the classic scenery so that we all feel right at home. Starting this week off with a little bit of housekeeping, the least of which is not the release of the original still attending Grandpa's Church t-shirts, the first of many to come Worldview Everlasting raiments. You can find a link to the Spreadshirt shop in the links below on the YouTube channel page. Sorry, you Facebookers. Time to learn something new. Now, Spreadshirt is just a little bit more expensive than Cafe Press. I knew that. I did that on purpose because I think they have higher quality stuff. Plus, every shirt you buy gives a $4 bonus, two of which goes directly to support Pastor James May and Lutherans in Africa. See the link below. And two of which goes to support the show itself, which will hopefully buy me my first t-shirt. So far, we've sold about 12. That's 24 whole dollars for Lutherans in Africa. The whole continent. Speaking of which, in the next few weeks, we're going to be giving here on Worldview Everlasting an exclusive update from Pastor May, including both special video footage and a new, rather awesome, special opportunity. But until then, you can still support Lutherans in Africa directly by sending donations to Bethlehem Lutheran Church. Where would that information be? And word on the street is that since my original video promoting the use of real Lutheran theology and practice in the mission fields of Africa hit the digital airwaves, you have raised close to $10,000. Now until the newly created LCMS Board for International Mission decides that training African pastors in pure Lutheran theology and practice is something worth supporting financially, which I hope they will, consider giving a few bucks every month to the cause. I know five lovely children, and this little girl too, who will really appreciate it. Meanwhile, this week was also the LCMS National Youth Gathering, where close to 25,000 of our youth are taken every three years to New Orleans to be taught that liturgy is a bit like this guy and that Christianity is really all about you. Next week, I'm hoping to have a direct update from the gathering for you. But for now, you can check out, in the links below, one DCE's blog, where he covers with enthusiasm the lady who preached to the entire gathering of 25,000, the answer to the question, how do you believe when you're facing the unbelievable? You ready for the answer? You don't need to have all the answers to experience God's grace. Our God is big enough to know all your questions, and he will never love you less because of them. Gee, Johnny, that sounds like the preaching of the hidden God. That is, even though you don't know what God is thinking about your life, all this crappy stuff that's happening to you is his way of saying I love you. See, the revealed God died on a cross so you could know exactly what he's thinking. But rather than go too deep into all of that right now, I thought I'd pull up a little footage from the gathering in 07. Here's the point of my talk. If you get this, you get it all. Please, here, here, I hope you get sick of it, but I hope it's in your heart. I love you just the way you are. I love you just the way you are. If don't let anybody tell you you're not valuable. Don't tell that anybody tell you you're not worthwhile. I love you. And there's a plan for your life. <sighs> yeah, I love it when people tell me that God loves my sinful thoughts. And it is so comforting to know that I'm valuable and have a purpose in life. No one ever told me that in kindergarten, and it didn't set me up for any disappointments whatsoever. Okay, okay, okay. Here's some more. You are chosen in him. God revealed himself to Moses in a burning bush. He told Moses his name. I am. The Lord I am chose Moses. And that same I am chose you. Was that a direct exercising of the office of the public ministry by a non-ordained 22-year-old girl? Hmm, yeah. So the plan is to get you stuff from this year, just to see if we've improved. 
But now, very quickly, and ask the pastor 2.0. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Mal. Quinn writes, can you make a video at some point on the topic of whether the church is a place that teaches us to live or to die? And why? And also on why pirates are inferior to ninjas. Awesome question, Quinn, and the only one in my growing database short enough to answer in the rest of the time. And that answer is a good classic Lutheran answer. Both and. In other words, the classic fallback, which was always so very tempting on every test you ever took. D. All of the above. Hey, I've answered D three times in a row now. That can't be good. The church teaches you to die. The first thing the church teaches in scripture is that you are going to die. It's a curse, it's your fault, and no matter how it feels, you deserve it. Get used to it, it's reality. Tooth decay. Thorns and thistles, pain, here it comes. The second thing that the church teaches us in scripture is that you are going to live forever, starting promise. It's a free gift. And no matter how it feels, Jesus did it for you anyway. Get used to it. It's reality. Everlasting abundance. Joy. Here it comes. And the third thing that the church teaches in scripture is how to live with both of these realities while still stuck in the flesh in one of them. The nasty one. And it's a bit more than patience, tact, and lots and lots of Tylenol, taken two at a time at no less than four hour increments. It's about getting ready to die as one who lives forever, and doing the right thing while you wait for it. And that is all about the word, law and gospel, hearing the gospel, which is about totality, freedom, sufficiency, completion in Jesus for you. And it's about then learning to see the law through the eyes of this faith, which reveals it not as something you have to do, or as something you need to do or else but as the ultimate definition of what the word love really means. L is for the way you look at me. O See, that's really catchy, the but it's all wrong. One. Go to church and hear the word. Obey your authorities. Don't kill anybody. Keep it in your pants until it's time to make babies. Learn to share. Tell the truth and realize that your incessant need to want things is a big problem that you're never going to get over until you die and get resurrected in your new flesh that will never fade. Holy crap, are we talking about law and gospel again? So yes, Quinn, live and die, die and live, buried and raised. Hey, that sounds a lot like baptism. Oh, and why are ninjas vastly superior to pirates? Well, duh. If you really need an answer to that question, then you got much bigger problems than I can ever help you with. So as a result, go check out Dr. McNinja in the links below and laugh until your eyes bleed. Thanks for the question. Quinn. I look forward to killing and raising you with the clear and powerful word of God. Too soon. Next Tuesday. Oh. <laughs>